Welcome to the Rig and Farm YouTube channel. In this video, we'll show you how we'll be able to grow over a million turnips for our pigs for about $20, a compost surprise, how we transplanted several squash and pepper plants, the setup and result of our first chicken processing workshop, and the startup of making space for our parents' forever homes. We pulled a bunch of weeds to make room for cucumber and squash plants on the opposite side of the trellis from our tomatoes that we transplanted last week. This 5-gallon bucket got filled to the top and dumped into our compost pile outside of the garden fence. What do we have growing here? We composted some moldy bird seed a while ago, and several sunflowers started growing. They bloomed the next day. The following day, they opened up even more. Five days later, they were fully bloomed and quite large. We were not expecting these to grow, but there might be a good use for them after all. Let's see if the chickens will eat them. GP seemed a little curious at first, and wandered off after just a few seconds. Cheep Cheep was the next chicken to show some interest. She started to inspect the roots while these two others stood by waiting for her approval. They decided that sunflowers are not their thing. We drilled holes into the soil with an auger to transplant the cucumber and squash plants. The cucumber holes were spaced 6 inches apart, and the squash holes were spaced 12 inches apart. While I was finishing up with the auger, Ashley started getting the cucumber plants into the holes. She pulled aside the loose soil with one hand, put the transplant in with the other, and then covered it up while pressing gently. The leaves were put along the trellis with hopes that the tendrils will grab onto the netting for support while the fruit grows. Tomatoes on the left, cucumbers on the right. Each of these pots had two to three squash plants in it, so the root balls had to be separated before being transplanted. They went into the soil the same way as the cucumber plants, but they require more spacing due to the larger size of the fruits produced. Butternut squash are much larger than pickling cucumbers. We sprayed compost tea on them to give them an extra boost of nutrients. A butterfly came by to check out this cucumber blossom. Might as well add some more compost tea to our tomato plants. I used a stirrup hoe to help weed the next two rows on each side of this trellis to make room for our pepper plants. The blade on this tool helps uproot the weeds and grass in the garden. It's much more effective than being on our hands and knees, hoping that we might get the entire root system when weeding. We still had to remove them all by hand, but it was so much faster and easier with this method. Look! We filled up another 5-gallon bucket! And it looks a lot better now. You can see the clearly defined line where we didn't use the stirrup hoe along the right side of the weed barrier fabric. The next day we dug two trenches for the pepper plants. This tray consisted of soil blocks where the seeds were started. Some blocks had two seeds that germinated, so they had to be separated before going into the ground. Each plant was spaced apart in 12 inch intervals. They were covered up once we got them all out of the trays. Now we have two rows of peppers that are 50 feet long each. Several pepper seeds didn't germinate. The Hungarian sweet peppers all germinated, 10 of the 12 serranos germinated, and we didn't have a single Lombardo pepper germinate. Oh well. When our pigs are moved to a new paddock, they immediately go for the natural vegetation. This really helps out with our feed bill. Look at this same area five days later. The four pigs are going through a 50 pound bag of feed every three days, which is significantly better than 50 pounds a day with five pigs before the hot weather helped us out by providing all of this forage growth. We're going to do something else to help out with our feed bill even more. We bought this five pound bag of turnip seeds for a little over $20. Look how many seeds are in there. Five pounds times 200,886 seeds per pound equals a whopping 1,004,043 potential turnips. We don't expect 100% germination, but even 800,000 turnips for $20 is a steal. At about a third of a pound each, that's 133 pounds of turnips for less than a penny. Ka-ching! After moving the pigs out of this paddock, the area where we fed them the last two weeks is well tilled and fertilized. We broadcast spread a few handfuls of seeds. Once the seeds were down, we used a rake to lightly cover them with soil. These pigs drink a lot during the hot Georgia summer, 
so this 275 gallon IBC tote gets topped off every few days. While we have the hose out, the turnip seeds get watered as well. Let's come back towards the end of this video to see how these turnips do after 9 days. We're growing pinto beans on one side of this trellis and black eyed peas on the other. To utilize the space on the other side of the drip irrigation, we decided to plant the rest of our sweet potato slips that didn't fit in our raised beds last week. We didn't move the drip tape when using the stirrup hoe, and I accidentally ripped it. Luckily we have a big roll of duct tape. And another 5 gallon bucket of weeds. Along with 100 sweet potato plants. Hey little meat bird! We didn't feed our broiler chickens the morning of our chicken processing workshop because it's best to minimize the amount of stuff in the digestive tract. Ashley's dad finished building our 30 by 15 feet lean-to off the shipping container, and we set up the tables for the workshop in the shade. Each attendee had plenty of room with their own cutting board. A few buckets of sanitizer with towels were available. We had the sink with running water and our handmade cold process soap for hand washing. PVC pipes were connected to the drains to keep the mud away from us. The plucker was placed inside a trough to make cleanup easier. We made this kill station out of scrap lumber and it holds four cones. Soil was placed in the buckets to help absorb some of the blood. Another table was set up with gloves, shrink wrap bags, and other tools such as the brand new knives that are included with admission. These folks went home with a fresh chicken, knowledge, and the confidence to process on their own. A few days later, we checked on the sweet potatoes in the raised beds, and they're looking great! The sweet potatoes next to the beans were already showing lots of new growth within a week. We planted thousands of wildflower seeds on the hill just outside of the garden, facing the road. A few dozen blooms have begun to pop up, and we finally got a dahlia bloom! Several gladiolus have bloomed as well. Three of our raspberry bushes are bearing fruit. Yum! Look! Turnip sprouts! There's our driveway from the start of our property. And here's the new driveway that Ashley's dad cut out with our tractor. Ashley's parents are currently living in their camper next to our home. That was never part of our original plan, but the horrible experience we had with Clayton Homes and the many delays kind of forced that situation onto us. Make sure you watch that video if you haven't already. The link is in the description below. When we bought this property, we knew that we wanted to make sure we had sectioned off an area for our parents to have a place to live for the rest of their lives. Ashley's parents are a little older than mine and already retired, so they're ready to get their forever home set up to have at least a few hundred feet of distance from us. My dad is also planning on building a tiny home in this general area, and they'll be able to share a well and septic system. He currently lives out of state, but will be visiting soon to help out with some of the site prep and possibly some preliminary construction. We'll post video updates all along the way. Thank you for following us on our farming journey. We'll see you next time!